The era of Twilight was a dark time for the Kingdom of Hyrule, both literally and figuratively. Hyrule was invaded by an infectious darkness known as the Twilight, a corrupt attack led by the Usper King, Zant. This game has a phenomenal story, but deep within this adventure hides a ton of secrets. Interesting details are landmarks that have a deeper meaning than meets the eye, obscure references and so much more, and judging off your guys love for my past two videos covering secrets in Breath of the Wild, I thought I'd take another bash at these secret videos, but on my favourite game, Twilight Princess. Secrets, hidden references, unknown mechanics, mysteries and so much more, you name it, I'm going to cover it. As usual, I have done as much research as possible to avoid repeating secrets that are commonly known, or that have been covered by fellow creators. So some of the more popular secrets and references such as Henna's resemblance to the fishing guy from Ocarina of Time won't be mentioned this time around. Be sure to go grab yourself a snack or drink and show me your mouth-watering meals on my social media, and without further ado, let's dive into 5 secrets in Twilight Princess that you might have missed. Prior to the release of Breath of the Wild, Twilight Princess was actually the highest selling Zelda game. Whilst you might have thought it would be Ocarina of Time, it's actually Twilight Princess. Now this is likely due to the fact that there are three versions of the game. The two originals released for the GameCube and Nintendo Wii, and the later HD remake on the Wii U. The games are nearly identical, but during development, something was accidentally left in the original game, but the developers decided to keep it in the game in the HD remake. For some context, the game was originally planned to have a magic meter, similar to the Wind Waker, but this was removed for whatever reason. Now, if you've played a few of the older Zelda games, you will know that to fill the magic meter, you typically need a green potion or jelly, and in Twilight Princess, we see this sort of restoration jelly in the form of red chew jelly, which replenishes hearts, blue chew jelly, which restores all hearts, along with purple, yellow, and rare chew jelly, which have various effects. But one type of jelly that actually has no purpose can be found in the game. Green chew jelly. This can be found when a yellow and blue chew merges together, creating a green chew. And as you would expect, it drops green chew jelly. But it has no effect. This is likely because it was planned to be used to replenish your magic meter, the same magic meter that was removed from the final game. Funny enough, they kept this little secret in the HD remake, even adding its own text, which the older versions don't have. So the developers are fully aware of this chew jelly which was probably accidentally left in the final game, but decided to keep it as a cool little secret. Castletown is one of the most iconic locations in the Zelda series, a joyful and happy settlement right beside Hyrule Castle itself, making the town the heart of Hyrule. Within the town we can meet many interesting characters, Telma and the Resistance Group, Chudley, the owner of Chudley's Fine Goods and Fancy Trinquets Emporium, Tingle's biggest fan, Perlo, and one of the most interesting characters and the person for this pick, Madame Fanadi. This Sheikah-associated lady runs Fanadi's palace, her fortune-telling home and place of work. For the absolute bargain price of 10 rupees, she will tell Link either his fortune and his career or love acting as a mechanic to help the player figure out what to do next in game or locate a heart piece they haven't acquired yet. But during her fortune telling process, she gives away a huge secret. Whilst predicting career fortunes, Fanadi will quickly mumber some magical words, but if you slow this down and reverse the text, it's actually English and reads, what am I talking about? The same goes for love fortunes, but with this request, she mutters out, wait, loading takes a while. It's very easy to miss this as the text does go by rather quickly and is backwards, but it's a funny little secret that could even be a very, very subtle reference to a lot of fortune tellers being blatantly a scam, but that's just a guess. It's a cool little secret that's easy to miss. Twilight Princess has some of the most fun minigames in the series, in my opinion. You've got Perlo's Star Game in Castletown, Isa's Rapid Ride, and Henna's Roll Goal Game, which is the most infuriating game to ever be created, by the way. But one of the coolest, and also most bizarre, is Fire and Philby's Flight by Fowl Game, where Link can pay to grab a cuckoo and take a flight down to Lake Hylia. 
with the game part being trying to land on a platform with multiple levels all containing chests. But it's these foul flying creatures known as cuckoos that hide a little secret. This can be done anywhere in the game, but I thought this would be the most suitable place to mention it. But if Link attacks the Cuckoos in Twilight Princess, he will gain control of the Cuckoo for a brief period of time. This is such an odd secret, considering that traditionally, if Link even accidentally bumps into Cuckoo, they will launch a full-on assault on the hero. It's so random and something that you could not know at all as the game doesn't tell you this, thus making it one of the funniest secrets in the game. The layout of Hyrule and Twilight Princess is very unique compared to other iterations of the kingdom. For example, Hyrule Field is split into three separate areas due to how large it is. They are all connected via Castle Town and small passageways, but not directly connected into one large field. In one of the back passages from the middle section of the field looping up towards the north portion of Hyrule Field, we can find a little cut-off tunnel which leads to the Hidden Village, an abandoned and now monster-run settlement which houses only one resident, Empaz. Now, I did cover this location recently in my video discussing the disappearance of the Sheikah in Twilight Princess, but I missed one huge detail which is actually a cool little secret, and it's found on one of the billboard signs atop the wrecked houses. This sign up the back actually translates from Hylian to English to read, Welcome to Old Kakariko. Further evidence towards the hidden village being the original Kakariko village from Ocarina of Time, as I hinted towards in that other video. This is by far one of my favourite secrets in the game, as details like this don't need to be added at all, but the developers go the extra mile with these sort of secrets. This pick specifically gives me some real nostalgia, knowing that this village was once known as Old Kakariko, but is now run down to the ground, fallen from glory. Before getting into my final secret, here are a couple of honourable mentions. When in Wolf Link form, Link can actually talk to other animals, such as cats and squirrels, but he can also talk to his own horse, Epona. In what is a conversation that Link probably never would have imagined happening, Epona tells him, Link, hurry up and return to your true self. Another small secret is that the other half of Fire and Philby's Flight by Fowl Fire himself has a banzai bill on his clothes. Not a bullet bill by the way, as bullet bills don't have teeth and banzai bills have sharp teeth. A neat little reference to one of the Mario series fan favourite enemies. The hero of Twilight has one of the most humble beginnings to his quest. He starts off as a mere farmer who works on Ordon Ranch under the wing of Fado, the man responsible for running the ranch, but unfortunately he has some trouble keeping the goats in order, so he has Link help him fairly often. Fado also helps Link train with Epona by setting up fencing to jump over. He's a nice guy, but there is something you probably don't know about him. Whilst we only really see Fado on the ranch, he does actually own a house within Ordon Village. It's located right next to the entrance of the village, and has a large tree growing above it. A common misconception is that this is Hunch's house, as he is standing outside, but he is actually there to try and score some bee larvae from the tree. Now, if you go up to Fado's house, you will not be able to get in, as the door is locked. Every other house in the village is accessible, however, even if the owner isn't at home. But what's odd is that Fado's house is actually eternally locked. No matter how far Link progresses through the story, this one house will always be locked. Trust me, I've tried this, as it's something I've been curious about ever since I first played the game. Many players either go on with the impression that it will become accessible at some stage later in the game, or they just forget about it. But Twilight Princess megafans, like myself, did not forget about it. This little secret has even earned itself the title of an urban gaming legend, with some players claiming they got access to the home, but sadly, that's false. According to series producer IGL Numa, the house was left locked and incomplete due to time constraints, which makes sense, but leaves us with this eternally locked house, the only place in the game that we can never gain access to. 
Thanks a ton for checking out the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like to support the channel and subscribe for more Zelda content. Did you learn any new secrets or references within Twilight Princess? If you did, be sure to let me know which ones and or any I might have missed in the comments below. The game is over 10 years old now, so there was always going to be a higher chance of some of these being known, but if I even taught you one or two new secrets, I'll take that. Huge thanks to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters for your kind support to the channel. Your generous support helps me to make these videos as often as possible, to the highest quality possible. So thank you all so much, I really do appreciate it. And special mention to new patron, William Morales. If you'd like to become one of my patrons and get your name featured at the end of all of my videos and more, then check out my page for the card in the top right or link in the description. Channel membership's coming soon by the way. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.